It's not just emergency teams in hospitals that are ready to help you. I know! There are medical crews all over the country on standby 24-7. We're on call with the West Midlands Ambulance Service, showing you what it's really like on the front line saving lives. On call with me is paramedic Jan Van. This is a rapid response car, and it's one of a fleet of vehicles that respond to up to 3,000 emergency calls every day. Time to find out what it's like to be first on the scene of a medical emergency. And a new case is just in. All the information we've got at the moment is that somebody has fainted. So that could be an infection, it could be heart, it could be brain, it could be loads of different things. We don't know their age, we don't know if they're a man or a woman, so we just have to get there quickly as possible, see if we can sort them out. Within minutes, we arrive at our destination. Hello, sir. Hello Do you remember what happened this morning? I just went dizzy. I don't remember anything else. 82-year-old Alan was walking home from the shops when two workmen saw him fall over in the street. But we were just uh, working here. What makes sense is just at the floor. He okay. hit his head there. OK. So it's actually quite a cold morning, and he's lucky that these builders saw him fall down, because if he'd knocked his head and been unconscious for a long time, he could have got very cold, and you end up with many problems, a head injury, hypothermia, and whatever led to the fall in the first place. Any heart problems? Your heartbeat's going a little bit slower than it should be, so I'm going to do a quick heart tracing on you. So what Jan's doing now is taking a tracing of his heart, and the reason for that is we don't know why he's fallen, but if it's his heart that's made him fall, before we move him, we need to make sure he's OK. And then I'm going to give you a drug to speed your heart up, OK? Jan's found Alan's heart rate's very slow, and that's why he's collapsed. It's really good that Jan's been able to figure out the problem, and we know that he needs an ambulance and to get to hospital. While Jan administers a drug called atropine to speed up Alan's heart, the ambulance arrives. Alan's slow heart rate is a real concern, and Jan has to administer more medication on the way to the hospital. OK, sweetheart, this drug's going in now. So Jan's giving Alan a third dose of atropine to try and get his heart rate up. It's really important your heart keeps beating strong and it keeps beating quickly enough to get blood around your body and particularly to your brain. What's amazing about Jan is all the things she's done for Alan ECG, blood glucose, she's talking to him the whole time. She's doing while we're moving along at about 30 or 40 miles an hour. Fortunately, we arrive at the hospital quickly because Alan takes another turn for the worse as he's wheeled in. That's a bit hair raising. My biggest concern happened. His heart stopped um, for about a minute, but it's restarted again now and, and he's talking again. Alan actually got a lot more sick as we got to hospital. He's feeling much better now, but it's so good that he's here so quickly, and that's all thanks to Jan being on the scene quickly and a really, really good quick drive here. He's in the right place, and things are looking good for Alan. During a short stay in hospital, Alan had a pacemaker fitted, and he's now happily back at home. Ouch. Chris, give me your hand. Why? I'm about to use a special piece of medical equipment on you, and I can only do this because I'm a doctor. Why do I feel nervous? Ouch! You've drawn blood! Is this really necessary? Now, don't try anything like this at home. And I'm only tolerating it because Zand is a trained medical professional and he's using some piece of proper scientific equipment. Now, the reason I pierced Chris's skin was to show you how blood is absolutely everywhere inside your body. It's true that while it did hurt, the hole actually couldn't be any smaller. Blood still came out. Our bodies are filled with five litres of blood and it flows through an incredible network of tiny vessels. As you'll know, if you've ever cut yourself on paper, even the tiniest cut draws blood. That's because blood vessels are everywhere in your body. You have about 60,000 miles of them, enough to go around the planet nearly two and a half times. Now, Zahn, wait here. Give me your hand. Now, I want you to take the end of this piece of string, start walking, and keep walking. Now, the string that Zand is holding represents the blood vessels in just one part of your body. So, do you think that all this string represents the amount of blood vessels in A, your arm, B, your hand, or C, just your fingertip? 
The answer is C. Amazingly, all this string is the same length as the blood vessels in just one fingertip. Your fingertip is only about one centimetre long, but the blood vessels inside it measure a thousand metres. So, that's how long this string is. And I suppose, by now, how far away is on this? Chris? Chris? I suppose I better get him back. So, there are thousands of blood vessels in your body carrying blood to and from the heart to keep everything working. And you have two types, arteries and veins. So take a look at this. It's a device that doctors use for spotting veins and it has a special infrared light. Chris, meet my veins. Look at that. Cool, that really is good. I mean, you can see Zahn's veins in all their glory. And the job of those veins is to carry your blood back to your heart. Now, your other blood vessels are your arteries, and they take blood from your heart to your muscles and organs. This is a piece of skin from a pig. It might look disgusting, but we're showing it to you because it has arteries in it, just like yours. They're thick, and they're tough and elastic, and they're very strong. Now, next to them are the veins, but they're much harder to see, they're much smaller, and they're much floppier. Now, the reason the arteries are so strong is because blood is pushed out from the heart and very high pressure, but the whole system relies on blood vessels being nice and clear. Like roads, they work better when they're not blocked with traffic. And to show you what happens when arteries are blocked, I've enlisted the help of some of my friends. Chris, meet John and Anita. They're wooden cutouts. They look a lot like John and Anita. Anyway, they both have tubes running all over their bodies, and those represent arteries. Now, the arteries on Anita are lovely and clear. With John, though, there are little blockages all over the place. It doesn't look like a big deal, but we're going to try and show you how much difference this makes in an artery race. In 30 seconds, we're going to see how much of our fake blood, in my case blue, in some case green, we can pump through the blood vessels to John and Anita's organs. Basically, we're going to be their hearts. Start the clock. No, oh, mine's really difficult. John's arteries are so blocked that no blood is getting to his muscles or his organs. I'm having to put in loads of pressure, and this is like John having high blood pressure, isn't it? On the other hand, Anita is extremely easy. Chris, Anita's doing fine, but John's in real trouble. John's hemorrhaging, and I'm hardly getting anything through to the bucket. You've got to keep pumping or he's going to die. John is not doing well. Time's up. Terrible. And no blood is getting to his organs. Well, Zond, I did all I could, but it just goes to show how serious a blockage in an artery can be. It's lucky John is only a cutout. If you want to have nice, clear arteries like Anita, you've got to exercise, eat properly, and lead a healthy lifestyle. Now, Chris, I've got a ball of string that represents all the blood vessels in your entire body. It's 60,000 miles long. Tie the end to your finger. Zond. Not falling for that trick. That is an enormous ball of string. 